This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are at the racetrack, but we're not sitting in the bleachers drinking beer. We're actually in the pit, changing tires, filling up gas, fixing the engine, and all this cool stuff, and it's gonna be a tense real-time adventure. Today we're looking at Pit Crew. This is from Stronghold Games, designed by Jeff Engelstein. Uh, it is for two to nine players, and so let's take a look at how this is played, and then I'll see you on the other side. Pit crew is for two to nine players. Uh, between two and five players, you'll be using only any two of the cars. With six or more, you can bring in up to the third car here. Cool graphics on the cars. They've obviously advertising for some of Stronghold's other games. And if you look really closely, hey, there's Suzanne Sheldon from the Dice Tower. And a little closer look, shout out to Suzanne's little emoji. The game is played over three rounds, and this board is simply to track to score to see who's furthest on the furthest lap. Now each car color comes with its own cards color, and there's essentially cards in here that are numbers. Now each of these cards has a number between 1 and 10, and the numbers are either going to be white or black, and this is important that I'll go over later. Now depending on the amount of people working on a car, you'll have a certain amount of car, uh, hand size. So if you're by yourself, you'll get six cards, but if there's three players on a specific car, you'll get two cards each. And if there's two, you'd get three. So it balances itself that way, even if you have uneven amounts of players on each side. Now the game is in real time, so there's no turns or anything like that. Once everyone has their cards in their hand, you start and you have this. So you're trying to fix four tires and fill the gas tank in the first round. Now to fix a tire, essentially you have to look at this number and play a card that's either one higher or one lower exactly. So I can put a one because there's a two there. The next player has to play either a two or they go backwards and they sort of flip to the 10. It wraps that way because the highest number is a 10, the lowest number is a one, and they wrap. So let's say a player plays a two. And then the next player has to play either a one or a three, they play a one. And let's say the next player can play again, either a 10 or a two, they play a two. Now you don't have to do it in the successive order. You can play a card here, then a card here, then a card here. And then just showing you how this works. And then you'll take your tire and put this here and say that, okay, we're done. No one else can place a card on here. And again, you can be doing it in any order. You're trying to, uh, you know, finish the, the tires. The gas here, essentially what you're doing is playing cards to the back, and these are trying to add up as close as you can to the car number, which in the first round is 27. Now, once a team has put their finishing touch cards on each of the needed places, they can go to the track and start rolling a die. Now, interesting to note, you don't have to actually finish everything. You can rush and finish early. We'll talk about what that does later. Now, when that first team finishes, they will take a die if it exists. The die will exist if essentially you're not the last team to finish. So in a two-car uh, race, there'll only be one die because this player is going to keep going until the last team is finished. They will, one player will be rolling this die as fast as they can, and any time they get a six, they'll basically yell, go, and that team will move its own car up one, and they'll keep rolling. Every time they hit a six, they say go. This will continue until the last team has finished and they'll say stop. If there was a third car that was in the race, there essentially would be a second die and then the first team would be rolling a die, the second team that finished would be rolling a die, and again, as soon as the last team finishes, they'll yell stop. Then each team, one at a time, would go through their scoring. So we'd look at each tire. This goes from a six to a seven to an eight to a nine to a 10. That's good, it's perfect, there's four cards and they're in right order. Nothing happens, that's okay. Here we have eight, nine, up to a 10, down to a nine, down to an eight. But notice they're all the same color. When this happens, you get a turbo and get to move two on the track. So that red team will get to move two spots on the track because of that turbo. Now when we look at this tire, we have a one, a two to a one, a one to a two, a two to a one, but there's only three cards here. We're missing one. Anytime you have a missing or an additional card over four, for each of those, you have two penalty points, which means all other cards get to go forward that amount. So in this case, there's only one other car, so it's going to go just like that. And on the last tire, it started at a four, but then went to a two, so that's a, an incorrect card there. But then the rest of them are okay, and there's still four. So you have one incorrect tire card, so it's, that's, that's one penalty point, so the other cars would be able to go one forward. We then would add up all the cards in the gas. We are one away from 27. Doesn't matter which way you are, low or high, for each one is a penalty point that you're off. So again, in this case, the other cars or car would be able to go one. 
Then we look at discards. You can discard a card uh, while you're playing. And so here's three of them. For every two, it's one penalty point. So in this case, it's just one penalty point that the other cards get to go forward. So it is quite frenzied. Again, you can leave early to try to roll the dice. You can essentially, uh, you're trying to play cards as fast as you can. You can play them. You don't have to draw up right away if you want to play them really fast in successive order, but you're always only drawing up to your maximum amount depending on the amount of players. So let's say it looked like this and the green had three penalty points. And so red would go on lap number two. This is just a way to keep uh, the lap counts. Also, if you ever get eight penalty points or more in one round, you crash and you're out of the game. If there's no cards left except one, then that car automatically wins. Now at the end of the round, these wrench cards get put up and there's only gonna be one for each team. So if the two player game, there'd only be two of them out there, but I'm showing you just a variety of them. Uh, whoever's in last place gets to pick first. They get to pick any one of these. These do different things like training on the top left. Uh, it's that you get to play those cards at eight and it's either color, or this could be a wild any number. Or this, when you're go rolling the dice, early a five or a six moves the car instead of just a six that's my favorite one uh, this one is move one car extra space for each turbo so instead of moving two it's three here is other crews receive one penalty point for each nine or ten in the back of their fuel tank or two of your crew members have their hand size increased by one so these are the different types of things they do you're only getting one per round and there's only one card out there per team to choose from you then would flip the, uh, your player mats over. Now you have a car 29, so a little bit more fuel. The numbers and the tires have changed, and now you have the engine to fix. XX means one pair. So you have to say a pair of cars that are the same number, and you do the same thing in round two as you did in one, round one for scoring. After that second round, you'd do another wrench uh, draft where you'd get another special ability card, and then you'd go to car number 31, which again, the numbers have changed, and now you need two different pairs. You'd play three rounds, and whoever is the furthest on the board wins. You can also play either an additional round or play the, the hotter card, which is three pairs up here and different numbers. So you could start on the 29, then go to the 31, and then to the 33, or you could just play an extra round if you want. Uh, that's pretty much it. Whoever's done the most laps wins. If you're on the same lap, whoever is further. If it's tied, whoever is on the inside wins because if someone gets there afterwards, they go on the outside. Now I first got a chance to play this a year ago at Origins where Jeff Engelstein was there uh, with a prototype. It was just some, some generic cards that he was mocked up and he was testing it with us while we were there. And even the first time I played the prototype version of this, I really liked it. It was the, you know myself and the secret cabal and we were all hanging out in the Dice Tower booth late at night at Origins and we played it and we had a blast and I've been looking forward to this uh, for a year to play it. So now that I've had a chance to play it multiple times, did it live up to the way I felt about it when I first originally played the prototype? Well, let's get going. First of all, this game is very thematic and it not that I have ever been in a pit, but I can imagine it feels like a pit. It is stressful. There's communication going on. You're trying to do a lot of things at once. You're trying to help somebody over here. You're trying to help somebody over here. You're trying to figure out who can help over here. And it's this frantic, Presses. It's, it's pressure, but it's fun. So I love how it really does make you feel like you're in the pit. And there's, because it's real time, there's some frenzied communication. You're trying to figure out what to do, when to go. You got people making, you know, split second decisions. You get some people doing something that you probably don't want to know. Oh no, you, you ended the tire early. They're like, no, it's okay. We'll go fast and push and pull. And you're, you're hearing what the other people are doing. And there's just craziness going on. And I love that aspect of this game. I really loved about trying to leave early to roll that die, to press your luck to try to move forward. That's like my favorite part of the game is, you know what, seeing where they're at, you know what, we've got one mix up on the tire, we've got one card short, maybe we're two off on the gas, let's just go, go, roll the dice and then yell, go, go. And, and the other teams are getting, they're put under pressure because they're hearing you go forward and then they screw up. Awesome. I love that aspect. It really felt like you're trying to beat the other people out of the pit. You hear them go by and that puts pressure on you. Unbelievably thematic. I love that aspect of the game. This game has a wide player range, two to nine, and it is pretty darn balanced. I mean, I played it one-on-one, uh, -on -one, just two of us with my father-in-law, and it works fine. It's great. It's your own little puzzle that you're trying to figure out. You're trying to go fast, but you're thinking you've got the most cards, uh, all the way up to having, you know, multiple people. And even, the, even when you have different amounts, so you play with five and you got three in one team or two in the other because of the hand limits, 
like the rule said, it was balanced. We felt it was balanced. So I love how you can play this game with a very wide range of players. Player counts from two to nine, and they all work well. It's not one of those games where it's like, well, we need an even, or well, we need this many or this many. Like a lot of these bigger games, sometimes it's like, well, it's great with six or eight, but it's not really. This thing works with with everything, and that's tough to do in a game of this type. I love the cool wrench abilities, where if you're in you know, last place gets to draft first, I love the, 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 the aspect of drafting these abilities and trying to figure out which one is the best for you, and I think that's a really fun part of this game is, is messing with those abilities. Uh, and so overall, this game is very tense, yet a super fun experience. I mean, everyone, we were done playing this, we played it multiple times, just even just last night, and it was just like, everyone was like, let's play it again, let's play it again, let's play it again. I mean, we got hot to the point where I had to like take my shirt off and just have my tank top on underneath because I was like sweating because this game is like, you get into it and you're yelling, you're screaming, you're doing your stuff. So overall, this game is fantastic. I mean, it takes the feel of the cards right into the game. So love, love, love this game. I think it is fantastic. Now, are there any cons to this game? I'm struggling to find one. It's gonna be an obvious one, and that's that some people might not like the pressure of real time. Uh, some people just don't like real time games. If you don't like real time games and you don't like being pressured, this is not gonna be a game you're probably going to like. However, I will say that since the real time is team based, you could put yourself in a little bit of ease saying, you know what, it's okay if I don't if I do not do the right thing or I'm screwing up a little bit, it's okay because I have a team to fall back on. It's not all on me, the spotlight all on me. But that's the only con. Otherwise, excellent, excellent game. Highly recommended. It's probably one of my favorite real-time games now. I mean, we look back to Jeff Engelstein's uh, di uh, the Space Cadets Dice Duel, which was fun, but the rules were really hard to teach. It was hard learning curve. And in a real-time game that's not as good as like this, the rules are easy, it's streamlined, it's a quick teach, and it's fun. So I'm keeping it in my gaming library, so let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.